Good morning. My name is Dan Zlinski from the Brookfield office. I am a PLM consultant with Info. Been here for about two years. Um, and actually, some of the names I see in the list have been some of my customers who, who I've worked with. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go through kind of the PDM Windows Explorer uh, integration best practices. So, it'd be kind of top level and kind of going through some little tips and tricks that maybe you know of and maybe you don't. Um, or just never even thought about it or looked into. There's some pretty good content here. Um, I was happy with it. So with that, let's get started. So the first one would be the File Explorer interface. The File Explorer interface, when you log into the vault, Solarworks PDM user interface is integrated with Windows Explorer with added menu options, toolbar buttons, and dialog boxes. So you can see the navigation pane item one uh, that is on the left of your screen or on the browse or the left folder functions, and that you browse the vault and folders that you have as favorites on your PC. The Windows Explorer toolbar, item two, uh, with SolidWorks PDM, the menu bar gives you access to commands and features that are, are, that are available for vault files or folders you select in the right pane. So it gives you options of the checkout options, get latest version, history, you can view files or create a new folder, um, kind of with the, the Windows options way of doing it. Item three, the SOLIDWORKS PDM menu bar. The SOLIDWORKS PDM menu bar contains navigation buttons and menus <clears throat> of commands that can be performed for the selected file or folders. So that's getting close to your window kind of vault view there. Uh, same thing, actions will have the check-in, check-out, modify will have your views, um, display can change your views, and also tools can, um, the admin tool, uh, change revisions, that kind of stuff. We'll get into more of the display stuff later on. Um, but it's kind of the, uh, a brief overview of the File Explorer interface. Item four is the file view. So when you open a SOLIDWORKS PDM vault, the folders and documents stored in the vault are listed in the file view in the upper section of the right pane. You can select documents to see a preview and access tabs with details. So that shows all your SOLIDWORKS files, um, Excel documents, PDFs, Word documents, uh, tells you the size, the file type, the document type, where it can be at in the workflow if you're using a workflow, um, and you can also modify those tabs or columns as well. Once you click on a file, you do have the option to look at the preview, the data card, uh, the versions of it, build materials, if it's an assembly or a drawing, um, if it's an assembly or a drawing, what parts it contains, and also the where used of those files. Uh, number five, the search view. You can use the search view to display file and folder searches directly in Windows Explorer. So if you click that magnifying glass, depending on what search documents or functions you have set up in your vault, those will show up um, in that drop-down folder. Another way to go to the search function is go to the tools search. It's also uh, under there as well. Number six, the BOM or Bill of Materials. The BOM view lists the activated and named BOMs in the current folder and lets you view and modify their details. So if it is an assembly or if it's a drawing, it will populate and show the files used to create that assembly and or drawing. And from inside of there, um, we actually can modify their details by based on your rights and permission set up in the, in the vault. Item seven, the bill of material contains. So this displays the detail of the bomb, which depend on the type of bomb you are viewing. So again, depending on what kind of bill of material you are viewing, it's gonna show you either latest or prior versions. It'll show you the descriptions, the details, the quantity, um, basically anything that's used to make up that drawing or assembly. And then number eight here, we also have the where used. The Where Used tab lists the files that the selected file is referenced from. You can select a version of the file for, wh for which to review parent files or display all versions. So this is great for parts, piece parts, that if you are going to change or modify a very common part or file within your vault, you can do a Where Used just to double check that the changes you make won't affect any other assemblies or drawings in a negative way. Um, that's a great function, again, for, for any hardware files or gussets or standard components that is used across the whole company to alleviate any scrap and or uh, problems on the shop floor when those files or projects get put, uh, get, put, get put together in an assembly. 
the File Explorer interface. So underneath the Display drop-down menu, we have Display Options. And this will list the excluded file type, the full role select, hide the active configuration, set focus to active configurations, show bitmap for SOLIDWORKS files, show full UI and SOLIDWORKS preview, included SOLIDWORKS simulation results and check-in, and extract hidden build material from SOLIDWORKS files on check-in, and show bitmap for drawings. So this is a good one here that I found out or figured out that a, a, a lot of people don't ever go into these option settings for displays. So the next few slides here, I've gone into kind of um, explaining or more detail what each of those options are, and then also screenshots to kind of show the comparison um, between them um, with just a, the screenshots. So item one, excluded file types. So excluded file, it, it excludes files with specific extensions from appearing in the preview. You can type a comma separated list of file extensions. So you can see the, the option box of excluded file types. If you type in, you know, PDF, doc, DOCX, um, Excel extensions, if you then hit OK, it will exclude those file types from your file view. So if you only want to see your SOLIDWORKS part, assembly, and drawing, you can exclude all other extensions in that file view location, and it will only show you your SOLIDWORKS files. Or if that in that folder you want to only see PDFs, you'd go through and exclude you know, SLD PRT, SLD DRW, and SLD ASM to exclude all these SOLIDWORKS file extensions. And then it gives you a much cleaner, simpler view to, to go through and try to find your file. And then to just kind of cancel or undo it, you go back into exclude file types, remove any extensions you have inside of there, and then hit OK again to see all the files within that folder and within the vault. Item two, full row select. When enabled, when you select a file, the entire row is highlighted. This is one that personally I do love for being um, an ex-admin and also being a consultant. Um, you can see the top box there is the default setting. So it only highlights the, basically the, basically the file is all it highlights. Well, if you have more information to the right of it, you know, maybe checked out by the state, um, the revision, that kind of stuff. When you have a lot of stuff on your, your file view, it gets kind of jumbled and you can't really read it you know, really good. So with the full role select turned on, you're able to highlight the whole, the whole role all the way across and just have it be uh, easier on your eyes to actually read it and see it. Hide the at configuration. So on the preview tab, it'll hide the data card properties of the default configuration. So you can see with the middle screenshot there, we have the at tab and we have the other configurations. When you turn on the hide the at configuration, it turns off that at configuration. Now what the at configuration is as well is it really is the default configuration of the SOLIDWORKS part or file um, that also contains all of your custom properties of that part and file, depending on where you put them um, with those files. That's one that normally I do personally. Um, I always have it turned on so I can always see the at tab because from my prior experiences, that's where I, where I always put my custom properties. Item four, set focus to active configurations. The data card tab has a tab for each configuration associated with the file. You can set a preference to display the active configuration, the default, or the as-built at configuration. The at configuration displays the file's custom properties. So again, if, if you're only using uh, SOLIDWORKS parts that have no configurations, you will always have the at tab as kind of the, the default. Um, if you start using more and more configurations, if you have it set to set focus to at configuration, once you check it back in, it'll be set by default on whatever configuration you were on last. Uh, for some people, that doesn't matter. Uh, again, other people where I've come from, other co uh, companies like having the best practice um, to be on a either default tab or the at configuration. Show bitmap for SOLIDWORKS files. 
So the preview can be set up to initially display a low overhead bitmap, which can be switched to eJoins Viewer by left clicking the bitmap. With, with this operation enabled, the preview will show a bitmap image of a selected SOLIDWORKS file instead of an eJoins preview. The bitmap preview requires less resources and loads faster. So if you do work with a lot of bigger, larger files or assemblies or, or drawings, um, this is a really good way to help speed up your performance. So again, it'll display a low overhead bitmap, bitmap image, um, and then you, you do have the option to left click on it to open it in eJoins. Now, when you do do that, it will take a little more effort to open it up, um, because now it does have to load up that file into the cache um, and open up in eJoins. But if you're just trying to look for files, search for files, and you don't want to have to always have the preview on and have it load up in the PDM preview window, a good option then is to have that option checked to have those files come in as bitmaps. Item six, show full UI in SOLIDWORKS preview. So when you're in the preview tab of PDM, you can show the kind of default SOLIDWORKS user interface for the files. So you can see you have um, the zoom to window, um, zoom to fit, the, the zoom in, zoom out, rotate, pan, um, and even your isometric views that you can uh, control your view with within the preview tab of PDM. Um, also in that window, the I believe it's the, the mouse middle button can be used to rotate the file. Um, when you zoom in, zoom out, it'll zoom the file in and out too. So you still have kind of the same default options or rotating commands as you do in SOLIDWORKS um, within that preview window. The include SOLIDWORKS simulation results in check-in. This will automatically include simulation results files as references when you check SOLIDWORKS files into the vault. So if you've done any simulation on any parts or assemblies, um, those simulations are kind of a parent-child relationship to the SOLIDWORKS files. And with that option checked, it will automatically bring those files into PDM with the part or assembly. If you uncheck that, it will not create that reference between those files. So again, some people or some companies like to have the, the simulation stored in PDM. Um, other ones don't really care. They have it on the network or just on their desktop for, for simulation results. Um, again, it's up to your best practice within a company on what you want to do with that. Extract hidden build material from SOLIDWORKS files on check-in. In a SOLIDWORKS application, you can hide a build material on a drawing or assembly to, to, to prevent it from distracting you. Meanwhile, you may want to access the SOLIDWORKS build material in Enterprise PDM to export ballooning and other information to other applications like an MRP or ERP system. So, Pretty much what it's saying is that even though the build material could be hidden on a drawing or could be hidden from an assembly, you can still extract it from those files from within PDM. Um, again, it's a great way that if you want to have a big build material table on your drawing, um, you can hide that, but yet still right click on the drawing and you can still extract the hidden build material. Um, and that can also help speed some, speed some things up because then you're not going into the drawing to extract that, that, that information either. Show bitmap for drawing files. This works the, the exact same way as show bitmap for SOLIDWORKS files, but for drawings. So it's gonna show you a low result um, bitmap for the DWG files. If you wanna open up in eDrawings, you just left click on it and you can open it in eDrawings. Another nice little function is adding columns to contains tab. So how to add columns to the contains tab? To change the columns that, that are displayed, right click any column heading and select columns to display them or clear columns to hide them. You can add up to 10 columns based on SOLIDWORKS PDM variables by clicking more and choosing variables from the choose columns dialog box. You can sort the default and custom columns in tables in, in ascending, descending, or default or order by clicking the column headers. Column sorting is useful within large, within large data sets. If you sort a column in ascending or descending order, 
the column is highlighted in green and an arrowhead appears. When you sort a column in a table, SolidWorks PDM removes the file structure hierarchy, sorting turns off show tree lines and show reference section controls. You can also drag a column header to change position of a column. So within the Contains tab, you just right click on any of the current headers that are, th that, that are there. It'll pop up a drop down menu that shows the default ones that are checked right now. So in this example, we see type, warning, configuration name, quantity, version, checked out by. Those are all default ones that come in with the system. If you want to add any more to that based on any variables you have created in PDM, you click on more, and then that other dialog box pops up that asks to choose columns. And all of those options listed, the approved by, approved on, author, bomb quantity, all of those are the variables you have created within PDM. And again, you can do up to 10 of those ones um, to add them into the column set for the Contains tab. Basics on caching. This is another great one where you can get the local cache loaded to your machine every time you log into PDM. Um, I found this very useful for standard components, say stuff like nuts, bolts, washers, your standard hardware that might change at night when someone adds a, a new size to it. Um, standard components that maybe you buy off the shelf from other manufacturers that you don't own um, and you have no, no control or right over them, but people might use them. Um, so this option is, is located within the PDM admin tool and you go to any of the groups or the user, uh, per user if you want to as well. Um, then you go to the cache options. In this example, I went just to the admin group. And then you can do this multiple ways. You can, either do, you can either do it for the whole top level vault, or you can do it per folder. So the option clear, ca clear cache during logout. When a user logs out, the software automatically clears the cache for the selected folder or folders and its subfolders. It automatically clearing the cache during logout reduces a user's cache size and increases security on machines that are used by multiple users. The option to clear the cache during logout clears all files from the selected folder that are not checked out. It does not retain files that are that are referenced by checked out files. So this is different from the some, this is different from the behavior when you just clear their caches their clear, clear their caches manually. In that case, reference files are retained. So Everybody knows, or anyone that, that uses PDM knows that when you click on any file within PDM, it loads that local cache to your machine. And it does that to, one, have the information, have the data on your machine. Two, the system is assuming that you'll be using that file later on. So having that local cache on your machine loads it up quicker next time around. But if, you, if your C drive or D drive, wherever you have your cache going to, is maybe short on space, you could do the option of clearing the cache during logout um, just to kind of keep that space opened up and, and not run into problems. But be warned that then the, the next time you go into PDM, you have to then load the local cache again anyways for the files you're working on. The big options at the very bottom there, um, when you clear the cache during logout, it does clear all cache no matter if you have files checked out or not. So if I have a file checked out and another file references it, but that file isn't checked out, it's not gonna maintain that reference. So the file that referenced the checked out file will also get removed. Again, next time around when you log in and you click on, it, click on that assembly, it's gonna reload that cache and it's fine. If you clear the cache the manual way, the system is smart enough to know that hey, this assembly is checked out and these part files are referenced by that assembly, don't clear that cache, so it keeps it there. And then refresh, refresh cache during login. When the user logs in, the software automatically places copies of the files in the selected, vo in the selected folder in the user's local cache, uh, automatically, automatically 
refreshes the cache during login, ensures that users have the latest version of items like CAD file templates and standard libraries each time they log in. This is one, again, that, that I loved using for standard components and for hardware files. Um, I was adding new hardware, you know, sizes or lengths, you know, maybe once or twice a day. So all my users had to do then was just log out of PDM, log back in, and now they have the amazing greatest um, versions of those hardware files. I also did that for my default SOLIDWORKS templates, uh, drawing templates, part templates, assembly templates. So that way, if I ever made any changes to those, uh, when they log back in in the morning, they now have the latest and greatest versions of those files. One thing I will say, though, is I do not recommend refreshing cache on the top level vault. Depending on how big your vault is, it could take one or two minutes or it could take a few hours. So if you're going to do the refresh cache during login, I would do it on a folder basis and not a top level vault basis. And some kind of real basic uh, checking out a file. Uh, to check out a file, you can check out an item to modify it. Uh, while you have the item checked out, other users can view but not modify it. Um, to check out a file is super simple. Either right click on any file and go to checkout. When you click that button, depending if it's a, a, a part or an assembly or a drawing, you will get the checkout dialog box here. You can use the checkout dialog box to check out multiple items for editing. Checking out an item gives you exclusive right to edit it until you check it back in. Other users can view and copy the item but cannot change it. So again, if I just checked out a part file, I'll only see one item in that checkout dialog box. If in this instance here I have an assembly that I checked out, it'll show me all the piece parts or sub assemblies for that file. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could check them out on the fly right now or just to check out from my top level file and then check those out manually as I start working on the, the files. And then checking in a file, you will check in files after editing to make them available to users, to users with appropriate rights. And you check in a file, changes are saved in your local version or local cache. Same thing, you can right-click on a file. Uh, as long as it's checked out, right-click on it and then do a check-in. Um, you get the same dialog box as the check-out, but just for checking files in. So the check-in dialog box, use the check-in dialog box to check in multiple items after editing. The action checks in a file only if the current user has the file checked out. If the user makes changes, a new version is created using the specified comment. If the user did not make changes, the checkout is canceled. If the current user does not have the file checked out, an error dialog box will display. So again, you can check out a file. Um, if you don't make any changes to it, it will look like it's checked back in, but it won't create a new version because nothing physically changed on that file. And that is it for the basics of SOLIDWORKS PDM Windows Explorer integration. Uh, Bob, any questions on your side? I did have one from okay. um, Desi. Um, it says, does the, the UI um, view, zoom, rotate work when you do a bitmap for a SOLIDWORKS file? So I'm assuming I, they're talking about when, when, you, when you do the preview and you say show bitmap yeah. for SOLIDWORKS. Uh, let me do a real quick look here. I don't recall. It's been a while since I've used that option, but I can tell you in about two seconds. Okay. So while, while we're looking for an answer to that question, does anybody else have any other questions? Is there any way to turn off or bypass the check-in, check-out dialog box? There is the option um, under admin tool, the groups, you go to explore, and there is an option to do like silent checkout and silent check-in. So silent checkout and silent check-in under the admin tools under groups. Under groups, then you go to settings. Explore. Yep, settings, and then I think it's explore. Uh, make it right. Yeah, it's somewhere inside of there. Here, I'll look in the ad, okay. admin tool on my end. But there should be, yep, so um, admin tool, the group you want to go to settings, reference dialog. So there is a way to check out file silent without showing the checkout dialog box. And I believe there also, when you're within SOLID, if you go to PDM options, I think there might be there to check in files the same way to not show that box as well. So go to groups, then go to settings at the bottom. Yep. And then reference dialog, the third from the bottom. 
Yeah, you know, did. Checkout file silently without showing the, the checkout dollar box. But now the the check-in one, I'm not I'm not sure. I hardly want to say no because when you check in the file, it's going to assume you want every single file that you have checked out to go in at that moment. And some people um, don't want to check in all the files. So it looks like we've got another question here from Tom. It says, where are cache files kept and how do you know if they match what is in the database? Um, the, <laughs> well, you, you go ahead and look for yours. Um, nope, so no. the, the, the cache files are located directly on your C drive wherever your vault view is located. Correct. And also, too, is you, you actually can't search or find the cache files. Um, they aren't native SOLIDWORKS files. There's some special file, hidden file extension that SOLIDWORKS and PDM does, so you actually can't find them or search for them. The way to know if you have this version is if you're in PDM, you can see on my example here, version 2 of 2. That means that I have version 2 on my local machine in the vault, 2 is the latest version in the vault. Yep. Also, if, if, you're, if you're not inside of Explorer, inside of the SOLIDWORKS add-in, it actually color codes it. It will show you that file in the assembly color coded in red indicating that you do not have the latest and greatest. Correct. It will, it will also, when you go to open that file from the vault, if you're using the, the checkout option, it will show you that that file is also not and ask you if you want to get the latest and greatest in that dialog. Back to the first question, the, the bitmap. So yeah. the bitmap is going to load up um, based on how the view was checked in the PDM, and it'll look a low-resolution bitmap. But the second you click in there to, say, rotate it, is when it converts that view from bitmap to the eJoin viewer in PDM. So okay. pretty much the, the, the bitmap is just a snapshot in time of that picture, and the second you want to rotate it or zoom it around is when it loads up then um, the SOLIDWORKS user interface. Okay, so if you try to use that tool, it will automatically go into the Eat Drawings tool. Yes. And we'll, okay. So we see my example here. So this one here is, is a, the, the bitmap view right now. So it's kind of real low res. Then once I click in here to rotate it, it converts it to the e drawing viewer now. Oh, okay. Well, that can be kind of beneficial. Yep. It, 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 it loads faster that way. Um, you know, again, too, if you're trying to go through a bunch of files, um, it's a nice way of doing it to actually look at them. But then if you do need to look at it, then you can just yeah, click on it and then do all your rotation and zoom it in. And heavens knows, we all need to access files faster. Oh, yes. So. And also, I guess on the, the other question, um, you know, I'll pick this group here. It's under settings, preference dialog box, and then right here is the checkout file silently without showing the checkout dialog box. Would really like to thank Dan for spending some time with us this morning. Um, really good information. I, I actually learned some things myself. Um, um, Computer Aid Technologies would like to thank you for spending some time with us during Design Innovation Month. This is the third of 40 um, webcasts that we're doing on different topics, each one unique. Each one of these is, is being recorded and we're going to be putting these up on YouTube. They'll also be available to get directly from our website, www.cati.com. If there's other presentations that you'd like to attend, these little fast, get some good information, get out um, within a, a half hour or so, um, they're also available as a schedule. You can look at it as calendar view at www.cati.com. Click on the banner for Design Innovation Month, follow down the page, and you'll find this nice looking calendar where you can pick different topics that you'd like to have some information about. So once again, thank you very much for spending some time with us today, and hopefully we'll see you very soon on the next webcast. So thank you very much. Have a great day, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, everyone.